In this tutorial, I'm going to implement repository inside of Kirin Architecture project. So, I implemented this project previously in another video. You can find the link of that video on the top of the screen and also on the video description. You can download the project from GitHub and come with me. And the link of the GitHub is in the video description. So, let's start. The first thing is, when we want to work with the repositories, we need to first have an interface for it, then an implementation for it. And in a regular project, which we call as all-in-one, everything is in one single project. But in clean architecture, we have different layers and we have different projects for the layers. So we have the domain and we have the infrastructure and we have the application and we have the presentation. And we implement the interface of the repositories inside of the domain and we implement that interface inside of infrastructure layer. So let's start. But before that, let me show you that in order to work with the database, we need to have an entity. So I have this student entity. It's an example. We have ID, name, and email for it. And also I have the context inside of the infrastructure layer in the persistence in the MS SQL server. So you can see that I have this DB context. And inside of that, I have this DB set of students. So instead of working with this DB context directly inside of my controllers and my services, I use the repository of the entities like students and the other entities so let's start and uh, work with them the first step is to add the interface for it so let's go to the uh, domain layer and inside of the i repositories i need to uh, add a new class here it must be a new interface and i choose name of i student repository for it and let's add so let's press ctrl dot and remove unnecessary using and also Let's press Ctrl that and convert to file scope namespace and make this public. So instead of this interface, we need to add some contracts and use these contracts and then we implement them inside of the implementation of this interface. So what contents do we need? The first one is a get all function. So inside of this get all function, we return a task with a list of students. And after that, I want to have a get by id async method, which I pass the long of id to it, and I will return an optional task of a student from it. And after that, I want to have a create async method, which I pass the student instance to it, and I will return the id of that student. And after that, I want to have an update async, which again, I pass the student instance to it, and I will return a boolean, which is true or false. And after that, I want to have a delete async method. So I pass the long of id to it and again I will return a task of boolean from it. And finally, I want to have an is exist by id async method and in that I will pass the long of id to it and I will return a task with type of boolean so I can check that if this instance of the student is exist on my database or not. So this is the contract of I student repository and it is a public interface so we can simply use this interface inside of our application layer. But the implementation of it must be inside of the infrastructure layer based on the clean architecture principles. So let's go inside of the uh, repositories and let me copy the name of this ISTUN repository. And inside of this repository in the infrastructure layer, I will add a new public class for it. And I will use the name of a student repository. So let's press Ctrl dot and make it file scope namespace. And here we need to inherit from a student repository. And you know that when we inherit from an interface, we need to implement all of the functions. So let's press Ctrl dot and choose implement interface. Visual Studio 2022 will implement everything for us. I will quickly minimize this. And you know what? Let me clean them and make them as the order of the interface. I think it's much readable. So let's press some enter here. And this is it. We need to implement that repository inside of this student repository and then we inject them in the next step. So let's start. In first step, we need to work with the database. So we need an instance of our DB context. Let me copy the name of it. Copying, by the way, copying is so good because it makes you a faster developer. And here, let's create a private read only of this db context and we need to use it so using clean architecture interface infrastructure persistence yes and then we need to inject this 
So if we create the constructor, we press Ctrl dot, and you can see that it will create it automatically for me. So we have an instance of DB context inside of our student repository, and we can work with it. So let's start. Uh, but before I start, I will create a region here and make it a constructor and dependency injection region and minimize it. So my code is cleaner. Let's delete this. So inside of this get all, we are going to return a list of a student and I will uh, create a list with a weight of app of Microsoft SQL Server DB context dot students dot to list async and I will simply return that list. And make sure that you are using async inside of the functions because you are using await. So let me quickly add this async to all of them. And continue. So we implemented the get all. The next one is uh, get by id async. So let's implement this. And I will create my student with this command of dbcontext.students. Where the instance id is this id that we are passing to get by id async and first or default async and i will return this student so if we find the student we return it else we return null and let's continue and go to the next step they create async and here first we choose the students from our context and we add the students to it we use add async method then we save the changes of the context using save change async and then we return the student.id as this long uh, id. So this is it. Let's minimize this and continue. Go to the next one. So the next one is update async. So in first step, we change the state of the student that we received to entity state.modify so the context can track it. Then we call the save change async and then we simply return true. Let's minimize it and go to the next one which is delete async. So instead of this delete async, first we find the student using this get by id async method that we created previously. And if it is not null, we first remove it from the students of our DB context and then we save the change using the save change async method. And don't forget to use this await. And then we simply return true else if we don't find that, we can return false. Let's minimize this delete and go to the next one. And in the final one, which is, is exist by id async, first we try to find the student using the id and this get by id async, get by id async method. And we return if the student is not null. So if it is exist, we return true, else we return false or any other business logic you want. So this is the implementation of it. And as you can see, we implemented all of them. So let me open them again. So we added this uh, ISTUNA repository contract here, and we added the implementation of it inside of the inter infrastructure layer in the repositories. So the next step is to inject them inside of the services. So uh, each time anyone wants to use this uh, repository, I student repository interface, uh, we resolve that I interface with this service. So how we can do this? It's too easy. We need to inject them into our services. Normally, we do that inside of the program that CS. Here, as you can see, inside of the presentation API layer. But we, uh, in the previous video, I showed you that how we can. Uh, categorize them inside of the different uh, projects. So we use builder.services.addInfrastructureDI and add application DI. So for the application layer and for the infrastructure layer, we can have the dependency injection inside of them. Let's go to the class to show you. So inside of this infrastructure layer, as you can see, we have a dependency injection class. And previously, we added these configurations for adding DB context of DB context of the SQL Server to the services. And also another one, which is this app PostgreSQL DB context. So we add that DB context of the PostgreSQL to the services. And after this, let me add a new region. And this is all we need. We just need to resolve this I student repository with a student repository. And because we are injecting this inside of this add infrastructure DB and we 
use that instead of the program.cs, it would be resolved automatically in all of our projects. So that's it, easy. So you can see that in, let's uh, have a quick review of what we have done. In first step, we added this uh, iStudent repository inside of the domain layer and we added some contracts for it. Then inside of the infrastructure in the repositories folder, we added the implementation of that interface. So you can see that we added a student repository. We inherited from our student repository and we added this uh, instance of the DB context and injected that inside of it. So we implemented all of that classes and all of that functions and now we can use that. And the next step was to inject these. So we added this add scope of our student repository and the student repository. So everything is done. No you can use this iStudent repository inside of your application layer in your services. If you have any services or if you are using CQRS, you can simply use this iStudent repository and work with your database. And this was the implementation of the repository and i repository inside of a clean architecture project. I hope this video helps you. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And also don't forget that you learn by building, not by watching. So go and implement everything you watch. Have a good time and goodbye.